equity research analysts publish tens of thousands of reports each year. Most are pretty dry. Rarely do they ever touch on the systemic risks of climate change, which is why a new leaked file caught our attention. In it, analysts at JP Morgan discuss the likelihood of extreme black swan events. They say they, quote, cannot rule out human extinction. And they even compare landowners and corporations to warlords. We cover academic studies. Subscribe to join us. We're going to be honest, this report is sobering. It's broken down into three sections. How climate change is happening, what it will do, and ways we can respond. This is a graph of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. In the 800,000 years before the Industrial Revolution, CO2 ranged between 170 and 300 parts per million. This variation came mostly from volcanic activity. Since the Industrial Revolution, CO2 concentration has gone parabolic. Today, the burning of fossil fuels account for most human-caused production. The oceans and land plants absorb some, but 57% of our emissions are still in the atmosphere. As J.P. Morgan notes, the relationship between CO2 and temperature is pretty clear, though there is a lag time and sensitivity we don't quite understand. More on that in a second. The warming data is obvious. January 2020 was the hottest January on record. The four warmest Januaries have all occurred since 2016. Ocean temperatures set a record last year. North Pole ice older than four years is down 90% since 2000. Temperatures in Antarctica set a record high, as warm as a summer in the Pacific Northwest. The hard part, according to the report, is understanding just how much warming we are locked into on Earth, given our CO2 production. The climate system is complex. It's nonlinear. Major changes can occur faster than expected. A surprise methane leak from warming permafrost in the Arctic could materially amplify warming. We call these known unknowns. They boil down to this. We don't know how sensitive temperature is to CO2 production. The UN IPCC estimates if we don't take any action to reduce fossil fuel use, atmospheric CO2 will be between 645 and 780 parts per million in the year 2100. Today, it's 413. Under this scenario in 2100, models predict temps could rise as much as 5.8 degrees Celsius above the 1900 baseline, or as little as 2.1 degrees. Just to illustrate that difference, at 2 degrees Celsius, the likelihood of dust bowl conditions in the U.S. increased significantly. Wildfires would occur near the Arctic Circle, and crop failures would be more common. But generally, our Earth would look similar to today. At 5 degrees, though, models estimate no rainforests would remain, no ice sheets would be left, and habitable areas will shrink toward the Earth's poles. You can understand why J.P. Morgan analysts are uncomfortable with that range of uncertainty. And it's why they say they cannot rule out the possibility of human extinction. The other major unknown are feedback loops. Even if we lower carbon emissions to zero and hit the two degrees low end of the estimates, feedback loops could push temperatures to five, six degrees anyway. The bank breaks down feedback loops into two categories, fast and slow loops. A warming Earth may lead to more atmospheric water vapor, which in turn leads to more cloud formation. More higher-level clouds trap heat, amplifying warming. Other feedback risks include melting permafrost releasing methane, a weakening deep Atlantic Ocean current raising sea levels in the U.S., and a runaway rainforest dieback. The report discusses many other things, including the failures of economic modeling. It's impossible to forecast global GDP using historical data entering a period of so many unknowns. Some models, for example, suggest global GDP would fall just 17% if temperatures rose 10 degrees Celsius. At that level, though, it's expected most complex life on Earth would be extinct. Conflict is another big uncertainty. When areas near the equator have more summer days above the survivable wet bulb temperature, 
air-conditioned space will mean life or death. J.P. Morgan analysts even make a surprising comparison. Quote, it is not only rebel groups that can take advantage of climate crises. Community elites, such as landowners or corporations, might also use such events to gain influence by securing aid distribution or unfairly claiming land during periods of migration. How will humans respond? Well, the report says what activists have been saying for years. The only way climate change can be slowed, stopped, or reversed is through mitigation strategies that impact emissions. Coal is still the number one source of electricity generation worldwide. Annual CO2 emissions from coal are 50% higher today than they were in 2000. Natural gas emissions have doubled. Renewables generate two and a half times more electricity than they did 20 years ago, but they still account for just one fourth of all global electricity generation. As you can probably guess, global cooperation matters. A tax incentive for renewable car usage in one country won't matter if another country offsets that in coal usage. Even if we can lower net human emissions to zero by 2060, most scientists think we've already locked in two degrees of warming. And that doesn't include feedback loops that could make it worse. So, JP Morgan asks, what if global cooperation fails? What else can we do? They suggest a last-ditch effort will be geoengineering. These are large-scale interventions to reduce atmospheric carbon, for example. Reforestation and ocean fertilization can do this. Carbon capture technology that mechanically pulls CO2 from the air is also possible. This can either capture ambient CO2, which is generally harder, or capture CO2 direct from industrial sources. Significantly more investment is needed to figure out how to deploy this technology at a scale to have a meaningful impact, though. JP Morgan estimates it would cost 10% of global GDP every year until 2100 to reduce atmospheric carbon to 350 parts per million. One would think we'd be willing to give up 10% of our progress to ensure the stability of our planet, but no proposals of this magnitude have been proposed. Another form of geoengineering is solar. If we reflect a greater fraction of the sun's energy into space, we could cool the planet. Brightening marine clouds is one way. Sun shields are another. But there's an issue. Countries can continue to emit CO2 and be bailed out by a sun shield, for example. The root of the issue is not addressed. And if solar engineering fails at any point, temporary increases in global temperature could kick off feedback loops anyway. JP Morgan ends their report as so. One powerful theme running through the climate change debate is uncertainty. The system is large and complex. We won't know where a tipping point is, such as forest dieback that locks in another degree of warming, until we've passed it. No government seems willing to sacrifice the incomes of their current citizens either in favor of their children and grandchildren or in favor of citizens in other countries. The analyst writes, most likely business as usual will be the path that policymakers follow in the years ahead. A link to the report is in the description.